Hello Primates! Josh from Primus Tracks here. Today we're going to talk about a Primus release called... Oh shit. Today we're going to talk about the Primus release, The Revenant Juke. This was a box set from Third Man Records. Uh, owned and operated, I suppose, by Jack White. Uh, there was a social media post of quite a while back now of Les and Jack hanging out somewhere, and I suppose this is the outcome. Now, this is a series of 7-inch records. Primus had never done that before. And uh, this is part of the Third Man Records subscription series. Uh, so, I was able to get one secondhand for pretty cheap. I'm guessing a lot of Jack White and White Stripes fans were mm, either not too thrilled or <laughs> just uh, straight up thinking I'm going to resell these uh, when they come to my door. So, we have Primus, The Revenant Juke, A Collection of Fables and Farce. First thing that comes uh, to mind when I see this here... Now, I haven't opened this box yet. I took the shrink wrap off. I was able to get it sealed. First thing I see here... Now, we were credited. We know the credit for art went to Adam Gates, but I can see Adam Gates uh, through and through, as far as the artwork goes, right here, through his work uh, doing creative... His own creative work with Madame Blavatsky Overdrive, among other projects. And right here, for his work artwork, especially for the Beanpole release. As we flip it over and look at the back side of the box, you have your track listing here. These are all studio tracks uh, taken from master recordings, I'm sure. And as you can see, you've got Third Man Records there. You also have the licensing from Universal Music Group, of which Interscope is now a division. You also have Prawn Song Records here, considering that uh, that's Les's label. The first two tracks, John the Fisherman and Too Many Puppies, on the first seven inch are property of Les and or Prawn Song Records, which is why you get so many Frizzle Fry and Suck on This releases. As David Lefkowitz told us, those rights reverted to the band around the turn of the century, 2000, 2001 or so, and they uh, are able to reissue these tracks as often as they want, and boy howdy do they ever. The rest of these are... UMG and or Interscope tracks, and that's why you don't see too many reissues of these albums. So let's flip it over and take a look on the inside here. First things first. Oh good, I'm glad that they're protecting their product. We have some kind of parchment paper here which gives us some information. Looks like this is number 53 in your vault package series. Uh, it says a box set of six seven-inch records. You can see that it's torn. Ooh, hand torn, how nice. There is some copy on the back here uh, about the band itself. No credit as to who wrote this, so this could be the publicizing team from Third Man Records. We'll set that aside for now. This. Now, we saw these images before uh, everything uh, was released, but this is the meat of what I want to talk about. So, nice box. So let's take a look at these records. Our first one, I think you can tell which track this is, but once again, take a look right here with these insane eyeballs here. This is an Adam Gates staple, and I'm really enjoying that he's bringing this style back to his illustrations for these Primus tracks. Now, we got to talk to Adam quite a while ago now, and he brought along less, which was pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, one thing Adam told me afterwards is uh, he said, after all these years, I still love talking about Primus and hearing Les talk about Primus. And I think he's uh, he's enjoying making artwork for Primus still after all these years as well. So this first record, John the Fisherman, Along with too many puppies, we have ourselves a John the Fisherman illustration here. Once again, signature Adam Gates, uh, cracked out eyeballs, fishing boat. I love the off kilter horizon line there. Second, and of course these are in chronological order. So this is from Sailing the Seas of Cheese. Jerry was a race car driver, as well as Tommy the Cat on the backside. And we've got Jerry there. Notice the halo. I never was sure if Jerry died, but uh, he did wrap himself right around that telephone pole, so I'm guessing he did indeed pass on. Jerry looks a little cracked out there with the racing helmet. Look at those tooth. Toofers, I guess. We also have a welcome to Elsa Brandy sign, so uh, we know from the lyrics, Elsa number one, we know where Jerry's from. I really also love the unfinished quality to the bottom half of Jerry, because this is really all we need to know, especially right here. Our third release. <laughs> This is uh, uh, directly from the My Name is Mud video, so we're on to Pork Soda. We've got My Name is Mud on the backside, Mr. Crinkle, 
And the reason I'm laughing is, look at that right there, that nice line of chalk coming. This is directly from the video, uh, a still from it, but Adam is sketching it up and giving us those cracked out luminary eyeballs. There's the tree from the video in the background. This is just creepy. I'm a big fan of uh, what Adam did to this. Uh, I love these sketch lines everywhere, and those teeth are scary. <laughs> this is a fun one to look at. Uh, and of course, there he is on the box as well, holding the baseball bat. So very bean polish, very Adam Gates-ish. And actually, if you look in your Tales from the Punchbowl liner notes, when you look at the illustration for Over the Electric Grapevine, you see details like this. Next, we have Tales from the Punchbowl. This is uh, clearly going to be why known as Big Brown Beaver, and on the back side is Southbound Pachyderm. There's the girl. There's the beaver. Uh, they both look a little zombified. Not sure what's happening there, but with the splatter here uh, also is something that Adam uh, will do from time to time with his artwork. I think there's your cyclone fence. So he's, he's uh, inserting all these little details uh, in the background. And so if you know your Primus lyrics and you know your Primus, uh, I don't know, myth arcs, then you will be seeing these as well. Next record is, oh, interesting, uh, interesting chronology here. So now we have uh, Shake Hands with Beef, Beef, excuse me, followed by Over the Falls. So we're still in chronological order. For a second, I thought we were going to be talking about Ballad of Bodacious, but that's silly. So we've got these glowing eyes again for the writer, old tough Henneman right there, uh, perhaps on uh, Bodacious, but this is Shake Hands with Beef. So uh, this cow, probably not going to last too long. For some reason, he's smoking a cigar. Hmm, do you know your lyri Primus lyrics? He's puffing a Tijuana small right there. I ruined it for you. Anyway, there's your hamburgers. We're shaking hands with beef. Uh, looks like it says, sl slam it in your hole. That's an Adam Gatesism if I've ever seen or heard one. There's a sign for D's Diner, which is uh, in the Primus mythology or Les Claypool mythology as well now. And once again, we have some unfinished business going on right here, but I love the splatter. This is very Adam Gates-ish. And your last 7-inch is going to be the anti-pop on the backside, Coattails of a Dead Man. So this one we have to be a little more metaphorical, I suppose. So here's a, a, a representation of Les Claypool, I suppose, with one of his signature hats, facial hair, uh, and he's baring his teeth and shaking his fist against the oncoming waves of syrupy pop music, as he likes to say from time to time. And it's got some nice detail in the waves. I'm surprised we don't see any uh, Backstreet Boys or uh, NSYNC singers <laughs> or Britney Spears hidden inside the waves, uh, but maybe Adam wasn't in the mood to make fun of them anymore, uh, as you know, the band and uh, their associates used to 20 odd years ago. So I do see what may be construed as a skull there if you want to get or uh, read too much into it, but uh, there's our anti-pop standing against the onslaught of weird not weird, but uh, weird to us at least, pop music. So, there's your seven inches. I didn't even open them up to look at the records, so we might as well look to see what they look like. I think they're all gonna be different colors. You've got the third man iconography, and you have, actually I really like the label, it looks very retro. Artist, title, timestamp, uh, looks like your inner scope label for these. Now, what I'm actually curious about is if I go back to our first record, will it also contain an Interscope label, considering that these rights, John and Too Many Puppies, uh, are now a prawn song product. Let's see. Ha ha! No Interscope right there. That's what I figured. I'm surprised there's not a prawn song right there, although uh, prawn song itself doesn't seem to have been active for quite some time. So no Interscope label on these, considering that Interscope doesn't own them anymore. By the way, these are really nice, thick records. Pretty cool. You got the small pinhole. I'm pretty sure jukeboxes have the larger pinholes for the music. I'm not going to be picky about that, but really nice colors on the vinyl. If you can get this for cheap uh, on resale sites such as eBay or Discogs, I recommend doing it. I mean, you're going to be basically paying for tracks you already have, but look at these nice pieces of art in a really nice box set. Revenant Juke, you're all right by me. Adam Gates, you're a great artist. Later days.